A Sunday morning three in one. Hi, welcome to Garage Geek. So as you can probably tell, it's Sunday morning and I'm trying to organize, just washed some blankets, some pillowcases, and I, I'm trying to get my garage in order. I usually work earnestly for about 20 minutes and then I do this. Oh, I need to make a video or, oh, I need to read these comics and then... <laughs> I just stopped. It's so bad. This is a three in one. So part one uh, is going to be announcements and parts two and three are going to be walkthroughs of some art books. And then at the end, I've also recorded a page by page viewing of each art book. Feel free to stick around for those. I'm actually going to speed them up for the sake of the time for the video. But if you if you want to see them in the proper, uh, like if you want more time to be able to see the actual art on the page, I suggest at that point you slow the video down to 0.5 or, or whatever, half speed. And then the, the art, you'll be able to see the art better. Enough of my stumbling through. Yesterday, I think I read for the first time ever a Carl Barks Donald Duck story. And I have to admit that I did enjoy it. I it, I wasn't over the moon, but I really, I, I enjoyed it. I found out that this is a painted cover by Carl Barks. So I, I really enjoyed that. So this was about Donald and his three nephews. The, I only read half of it. So I read the first story in it. So I still have to read the second one. But the first one is by Carl Barks and it's called Sheriff of Bullet Valley. And so he and his nephews go to a town and there's a, a wanted poster with an, a reward. And all they have to do is get through some cattle rustlers. And I'll have to admit, there was an, a mystery in here that I couldn't figure out <laughs> as I was going through. The, the actual solution was silly. I would never have guessed it because I don't think it's very logical. But okay, <laughs> it was a mystery that I couldn't solve. So it actually kept me going. I really liked this panel. I'm going to actually put that up on the screen. And I sent it to my husband. I was like, oh, isn't this so cute? And then I sent it to another YouTube who will remain anonymous. <laughs> and he sent me back, oh, I really like that dick art. <laughs> and, and then he immediately write, wrote, um... <laughs> It was so funny. I was I was laughing so hard. I don't know why, but I think Alexa is kind of perverted. I I she always changes duck to dick. Always. I've I've written duck. I don't know why I've written duck a lot, but every time I write duck, it comes out dick. And she, you know, it changes before you think, you know, and it just sends. So I think Alexa's a little bit perverted. It was very, very cute. I actually liked it, and I'm definitely looking forward to reading more. Now, what's interesting about these uh, Donald Duck adventures is they will put more than one featured artist and from different time periods. What I really liked is that for some reason, and all the ones that I bought, I'm going to show it to you, they actually say, hey, this is what came out this month. And they break down each issue and they tell you the artists because it's really hard to find the information on who did what because they, they don't tell you. This page, it's a single pager. I have no idea who illustrated it, who wrote it. They break it down in the text. So, for example, I'm going to tell you the highlight of this double-sized issue is Carl Barks' 32-page Western adventure, Sheriff of Bullet Valley. Blah, 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 blah. Backing up the book is The Pirates of Ashcanistran, a 24-page story from the 1960s with art and story by Bob Gregory. A Barks painting depicting Donald as the sheriff graces the cover. But that's really cool information because... Since I'm just starting to get into this older um, art and also the comic comics, this is vital information for me. So it really helps me navigate through, you know, the different art and the styles because I'm all of this is new to me. So I appreciated that. I, did I go on too long about that? I don't know. I'm just fascinated by it. All sorts of words is a writer. He's working on his second book and he self-published his first. I believe it's his first novel and it's called The Amazing Miss Cadabra and I I guess I can show his name cuz it's on the on the book his name is Ricky Malo and I don't know exactly how to pronounce that it's it's written male hot but I'm sure that's not how it's pronounced sorry all sorts of words don't be mad about if for me mispronouncing your name because you've never said it i don't believe online but i'm gonna assume that it's some kind of french so it's malo or something like that i went ahead and and, and got it you can buy it through amazon um, i'm looking forward to reading it I, i'm not into fantasy i'm more sci-fi 
horror. I, I don't hate it by any means, but I am looking forward to reading this and I will be reviewing it. But unlike all sorts of words, I won't be giving spoilers. And the final thing that I want to announce is Josh Keach is a YouTube a VC member from England. And I'm going to put a picture up. I went ahead and bought his uh, two CDs. Uh, he just released his self-released on Bandcamp. His second CD. Since I'm in the United States, they were charging $10 per CD. So $20 just to ship. So I me emailed him through Bandcamp and said, hey, is there a way that we could work this out? Da, 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 da. We did it. I ended up getting uh, both CDs. But yeah, $20 for shipping was just too much for me. I, I mean, I, I wrote him. I said, I'm, yeah, that's just too much. I'm so cheap. But I really want to support you. And I want I want your CDs. I don't want to buy them digitally. I'm not, I'm not a digital kind of person right so it would have been so much easier if i just you know clicked buy with the digital but i just i know i don't listen to things that way josh keach on bandcamp if you're i, I believe it's all instrumental it's a little bit on the heavier side but but not too much it's i believe it's kind of like sci-fi type of of uh heavy metal like the people in the heavy metal community are probably, their eyes are rolling in their heads because they have specific words for every single, like if a guitarist does one guitar lick a, a different way, they've got a term for it. And I'm like, it's sci-fi rock. I don't, I don't know how to explain it, but whatever. I'm looking forward to it. It's, it's, let's say it's dark instrumentals. <laughs> we'll call it that. And, um, Josh Keats, sorry, <laughs> I'm murdering your your release, but I'm really looking forward to getting those and being able to listen to them on repeat while I read my science fiction books. And, or maybe, hopefully it might come soon and I can read it while I'm listening to the amazing, uh, I mean reading the amazing Miss Kadabra. Sleepy Reader 666 interviewed me, I don't know, like two weeks ago. I was... He, for some reason, we were talking about the fantasy book art, and I was t I was lamenting the fact that I really, really would like to start buying fantasy and science fiction paperbacks. I have a few, and I, I just love the art on them. I just love the presentation. I would like to start collecting it, but, you know, I have so many things that I've already been collecting, and each book would just take up so much... Oh, I remember why. I was talking about the painted covers on the Hardy Boys and Nancy Drew books. I absolutely love those covers. And I was lamenting the fact that, oh, and he was talking about, oh yeah, I have a whole bunch of the Edgar Rice Burroughs, um, you know, painted covers books. Blah, blah, blah. And I said, wow, it's a shame. I wish there were some kind of coffee table book where they would present the art like full page. And then like just one little book would save so much bookshelf space, right? I wouldn't have to buy each individual and the art would be bigger. And he's like, uh, dummy, there's already one. And so this is it. So he pointed me to, uh, Frazetta book cover art. Now this is relatively new. So I pretty much paid full price for it. And that was $28, but I was willing to pay that. I didn't want to wait for it to be used. I could have waited a couple of years and blah, blah, blah. Maybe gotten it for about 18. Uh, but I had just recently visited the Frazetta Art Museum, the one in Pennsylvania. And I have all this, these posters that I got. And I don't want to take them out of this, this tube because I don't have anywhere to hang them. And I know once they're out of this tube, I won't be able to get them back in. And then I'll just have something else in this room that I need to move around and clean up. I'm not opening those live on the air. Not yet. I got this book. And I'm I'm going to do a flip through. And remember, at the end of the video, I go through the entire book. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip through the book. And then as I'm flipping, I'm going to move over. As I'm flipping, I'm going to be putting images here. Now, it's just me talking. So sometimes I'll probably take an image and I'll zoom in and I'll cut me out. I mean, you really don't need to see me. I mean, of course, I'm gorgeous. But yeah, you'd probably rather see the, the full page art. All right, so here we go. I'm starting to flip through this book and, and I'll hold up some things as well. Like look at this gorgeous double page spread that opens up the book. So Frank Rosetta, you know, very famous fa fantasy artist. So mostly he's famous for like the Conan books and the Edgar Rice Burroughs books. 
but his work became really famous. Like there's, there's a couple of albums that I'm really looking for. I'm still having trouble finding them. I only have one and his artwork are on those covers and they're gorgeous. I think two, two at least two of them are on the Nazareth albums. I'm having real, a lot of trouble finding those. And the other, the other two I think are on, I'm forgetting the name. It's a Southern, Southern rock group, I believe. I have one of those. I'm still on the hunt for those. I, I, I did find, I found like one or two of the Nazareth ones. Ones, but the, the albums were beat up and I just wouldn't buy them. Like, I want it looking nice. So I'm going to be picky. I want my art, album arts to be like almost perfect. I don't want all those beat up. And they were 10 bucks for like that, you know, the kind where the edges are like all shredded. And like, I don't want that. <laughs> Back to the art book. At the beginning of the book, we got a lot of Tarzan books. And you can see that they're, you know, as we start this out, it's more kind of sketchy. Even though the detail is there, it seems more like a pencil and uh, what would I call that? Kind of like a chalky colored pencil type. I, I don't know. It's very different from some of his later books. Like like when you see like this one, it's, I don't know what you would call that. Maybe it's the, the type of paint that he's using, but still they're gorgeous images. I just say that later his style will be uh, much more different. So yeah, the first part of this book is on Tarzan and then it moves into to more Edgar Rice Burroughs stuff. I'm gonna have to admit that I don't think I've ever read any Edgar Rice Burroughs, and so I'm definitely gonna have to change that in the very near future. I've never even read a Conan book. Of course, I've read all the, I can't say all, but I've read the majority of the comics. So yeah, I will be doing a deep dive into Edgar Rice Burroughs, hopefully within a year. If the stuff, I hope the avail the stuff is available in an audiobook. You've got all this fantasy, you know, if you've ever uh, watched a movie or you know about like John Carter, Warlord of Mars, a human male is dropped into a bar barbaric civilization that has weird creatures in it. So he did do some of these horror covers, like that's cool. And then look, you've got this, this amazing image where he's under the earth. And then he also did some kind of books, for, you know, for popular. I would call those like those romantic romp rom-com romps of the 70s. These are definitely a cartoon style. Yeah, but even though they're cartoony, they still have his painterly style to it. Like, here's an example. I mean, look at that. Now, does that evoke a mood? What is this in the tradition of Desaad Torture Garden? Like, what? I, I actually, I haven't read all the notes yet because I just got this book, but I am looking forward to reading. Because this one says... Sadly, the full flame background was stripped out by the publisher. So there would have been like, uh, you know, flames all around here, the torture garden. The forbidden exotic classic on the agonies and ecstasies of sadistic passion. That would be a fun book to, to read, honestly. This would be a great book to own. A Ray Bradbury with a Frazetta cover. Wow. And then, of course, on the next page, we've got Conan. And that's one of his iconic images. I actually saw this one in the Frazetta Museum. There's actually two Frazetta Museums, I believe. The daughter-in-law who ran the museum, she gave us the tour, which was a really, really good tour. Worth, worth the price of admission. And she said that the artwork itself that is on the wall, it cannot have the name Conan. Like, it couldn't be called Conan. And this one is just called The Barbarian. Which, you know, that's interesting that they won't let, allow them to have the rights. Although, like, I mean, honestly, Frazetta is probably the one that got these books sold. I mean, Conan now is a house. I wouldn't say he's a household name, but he's a, certainly a super famous name. But back when these books were coming out, I, I don't know, cause, right? Because I was just a child when this was coming out. So... Would the name Conan or would the image have sold this book? I just can't answer that question. Maybe Sleepy Reader would know, right? Sleepy Reader, would you please put that in the comments? What do you remember? He's, sorry to call you out. I don't think it's embarrassing, but he's a little bit older than I am. So he would have been maybe like, I would have been maybe two when this came out and he would have been like eight or 10. So did you already know the name of Conan or would it have been the image that would make you want to buy that or both. So yeah, there's a lot more of Conan. Here's like another one of those romp. I actually haven't seen that movie. I'd like to see it. The Busybody. Oh, and this one is by Donald Westlake. Do any of you recognize that name? I've been reading his series of books, but he's a career criminal and every book is amazing. What is his name? 
Stark, or maybe that's his pseudonym, Richard Stark. Anyways, if you've been following my channel, I'm on like the sixth or seventh book, and I'm telling you, the, this book series is amazing. So I would absolutely like to have that. Even though it's like comedic Frazetta art, but also because of the writer, and it would be something different from his career criminal. Oh my gosh, and I'm getting the comic. I'm so excited because of the comic uh, collection, the Omnibus, is is coming within the next month or two. I've already pre-ordered it. As I'm going through this, there's more Thor. This is probably one of my favorite images. We're moving into a different barbarian named Thongor. I actually have a comic about of Thongor, but I'm not sure if it has two R's at the end. And this is written by Lynn Carter. Now, I see that name. I'm going to assume it's a man, but I could be wrong. His name is always associated with Conan and Edgar Rice Burroughs, and I see that name everywhere. So I need to investigate the writings of Lynn Carter. I think I also see Lynn Carter a lot with books associated with the Cthulhu mythos. Here's an Elsprog de Camp. That's another uh, writer that I don't know much about, but I always see the name. My whole reason for buying this was not only for the great art, but to stop myself from going out and trying to track down these books so I could have a collection. But having this book makes me want to do it even more. If any of you have these books at your house and you don't want them, sell them to me for a dollar each. I'll pay for shipping. <laughs> have putty. Have putty. <laughs> have putty. Have pity on poor garage. Here we have uh, him illustrating a uh, Michael Moorcock book. And of course, I'm, I just finished uh, the first book of the Elric series. And as soon as I get through all the Elric, I'm definitely going to go on to other books that he has written. So Michael Moorcock was a, a, one of my favorite writers as a child, and he's held up. The, the writing is actually really good. This one I thought was crazy. It's all surreal. And then look at this one. I was laughing. I'll put the picture up on the screen. But it says, The High Side. Satan's outlaws, hellbent for kicks. They played tag with death and took all their curves on the high side. A brutal battering novel of Rebels on Wheels. Seriously, the last two B-movies that I watched, one of them is I Drink Your Blood, had all this satanic stuff and looked like this. And then there was the other movie where, oh, I think it was Werewolves on Wheels. It was just like this, where at the beginning there's a satanic ritual and then, you know, they're transformed into werewolves and they have to hunt each other down. And they're all, you know, it's a motorcycle gang. <laughs> that must have been a huge 70s craze. Sat Satanism and bikers. I love when his artwork like deviates. Like that wouldn't be typical for Zeta Fair, right? A spy. But look at how well that's done. Like I'd want to pick up this book and read it just because of that awesome cover. And then look at that one. He makes this what seems like a normal bedroom scene, like, you know, the jilted lover throwing the guy out of bed into something so dynamic and fantastic. This one is interesting because it's it's very like that Clint Eastwood 70s, early 70s movie. This is a very iconic cover. And I remember when we were in the, in the art gallery, the, there was a group of like five of us there. And she was asking, can anybody notice what's weird with this picture? And I made two suggestions. I forgot what I said first, but it was wrong. And I was like, oh, there's no reins on the animals. How, like, how are they, how are they um, staying on the sled? And she was like, that's correct. They never added the reins in, in that picture. I mean, this one is very sketchy. It's like, I remember there were movies, of, there were, they were black exploitation or just exploitation movies about slaves uh, being forced to have sex with the masters. Like, I remember that as a kid because my there was a movie on HBO that was in full on rotation. And my father warned me, you better not watch that movie. So, of course, I watched it and I forget what it was called. It was. Oh, I think it was called Mandinka. I need to hunt that movie down. I just remembered it's called Mandinka. And I believe there are all kind of like sex with slaves like the, those movies. So has have any of you seen Mandinka in the you know recent years and like is my memory right it was just like all this sex like masters having sex with slaves and not and not just men with the women it was also the the like this the women with the men I mean and she's down in this submissive position but she does not look scared at all 
<laughs> so that was another type of like uh genre of the 70s crazy okay of course that's one of his most iconic covers called the death dealer which is awesome oh molly hatchet that was the cover of the Molly Hatchet album, and I don't believe I have that one. I have the one where the guy has the... Let me find it. I really liked that that picture, so I'm going to zoom in on that when, when it comes to it. Yeah, there's a lot of boobs and butt involved in here, so there you go. There's some naughty, naughty butt for you. <laughs> have to admit, it, it's very sexy and appealing. They were also talking about how um, he preferred to have a lot of nudity in his paintings. And um, he would have to change it and cover it up for the book covers, but he would either change it back or he'd have another copy, something like that. But later when he was, he would refuse. He was like, you either use the nude or you don't use my painting. And he had the power and the, the you know, he was already wealthy and well-known. So he had the ability to say, nope, this is the way I want my art. And that's pretty cool. That's Admiral, right? That he got to the point where he could do that. That's also a Molly Hatchet album. And I think that guy's leg is so sexy. Sexy legs. <laughs> they would be sexier with hair all over them. Wait, was that CMI? Some Battlestar Galactica. There's a lot of L. Ron Hubbard books. And this has always made me wonder. L. Ron Hubbard, I think, was a respected sci-fi writer. I think he even won the Hugo or was nominated. Um, I've never read any of his uh, books at all. I know he went into the Scientology later, and um, maybe he's derided now. Can any of you inform me about that? Do you, Have you read any L. Ron Hubbard books? He's got a lot in here, and he was even... Like, uh, the editor of this sci-fi series, The Writers of the Future. So, for example, this... I remember this one being made into the movie with John Travolta, and it was got horrible, horrible reviews. And I remember watching it, and I, di I didn't think it was a horrible. I just... I, I didn't think it was great, but I thought it was entertaining. But I had already gone, gone into the movie knowing that it was so uh, badly reviewed. This is a, a pretty iconic image. I, I really like this double page spread that shows front and the back with just the large text and not all the the other the other text involved and i guess this was a later edition of the book but yeah you get the scope of that here's another example of that i absolutely have to track these down there's another example of that wrap around art a battle so i'm laughing at this Battlestar galactica because look at the the asses on these chicks, man. Those asses are nice. Look at those. Those butts are, those are delicious butts. And then, <laughs> I mean, it's a Battlestar Galactica and like, look at her breasts, it poking out of her uniform. Like that doesn't make any sense. I never saw an episode of Battlestar Galactica looking like that. There you have it. Frank Frazetta book cover art. What do you think? Is this a book that you would like in your collection or was my flip through and, you know, image close-ups enough for you? So, of course, I'm a fan. I was so happy when Sleepy Reader 666 pointed this out to me. And in fact, there's a couple other books that are very similar that I'm going to try to hunt down. I want a contest. I believe his name is Scott. Now, I have difficulty remembering his name because he's constantly changing his channel title. He's always going on about punk. And right now, he is really into punk cassettes. And I find it fascinating to watch what he shows because there are things that I would never buy. But of course, I love the art on the stuff that he shows. And so it's really interesting to see like the different cassettes. Cassette culture, I won a contest and they were like punk books. And I was like, uh. and he was like, don't worry, I got you. And he sent me all these comics and this hardcover book. And that was seriously about five months ago, and I've been meaning to review this ever since. The art in this is gorgeous. So it's called The Dynamite Art of John Cassidy, or Ca maybe it's called Cassidy. How much, how much the colorer adds to it, because they add so much shading. Let me give you an example. So look at right here, there's blood, right? It's a solid color. But when you look over here, there's all this shading on the on it that's all add but added by the colorist that's not in the original art and that adds so much depth to the finished art piece he also likes to do a lot of layering so as you see this you have the top image 
which is just the Lone Rangers, you know, with his mask on. And then later he adds in the bottom image. They show how this is done, right? Because there's another uh, where he, it uses just that image. So he, he does that quite a bit. He layers two images on one cover. I'm going to say that I didn't research this, but that image is that image reminds me of Howard Chaikin. So yeah, there's the, the first, this section is all about his Lone Ranger covers. So they, they put out a Lone Ranger series that actually, just from the covers, it looks it looks really interesting. He does this a few times where there's a lot of like negative space and just a small image. There's one with just a bullet on the whole page. This book, like it has this on one page and this on the other. And it's like, wait, why did they do that? It's the same. I, I don't see how this one is uncolored and that one is colored. Like, they look the same to me. So, to me, that was a lot of wasted space. They should have just one page. First of all, even if I saw a comic like that, I would think, that's a cheat. Like, yeah, it's just this one little thing on the, the entire thing. And I get it. It's his silver bullets, right? It, he's famous for that. But that's just a lot of wasted space when you could have, you know, something like that, like gorgeous art. Here's an example. We got the, you know, the straight up art by John Cassidy. Then you have the inked version and finally the, the colored in version. So it takes you step by step through that process. It's pretty cool. And, you know, you'll get something like that where you'll get the, the pencil and the ink versus the finished product. Here's another example of, you know, all that empty space. But this one, I think, is just, it's, it's well done. So now we're going into a series called Battlefields. This is another example where he will have two images on one cover. Like, he'll split it. Not He doesn't do that for everyone. For example, like that. You could argue there's still two images. There's this, and then there's what's going on in the background. But not really. So this is like an image within an image. We've got the outline, and then we got this battle. So that's technically two in one. There's an example of where he does two images in one. So the next section is dedicated to the death defying devil. So this is this is the one that I was saying that kind of reminded me of Daredevil. And I remember I bought one of the comics and the cover is gorgeous, but then when I opened it up the interior art was so different and it was nowhere near as good. And so I was kind of really disappointed. The next section is this Buck Rogers series, and I have to admit the the images are very good for this, but He's wearing these this type of pants, which kind of detracts from the image every time. It adds a certain look and feel to it, but it's just every time I see it, it's like, does his hip have a boner? I mean, what's going on? Then there's a section on Sherlock Holmes. I guess he did a, a mini series on that. There's a section on Dracula, the complete Dracula. I'd have to admit that I would like to track these down. Here's where he does the double image on the cover. And, you know, a lot of blacks and reds. That's those. The way he drew Dracula is like really cool. Kind of reminds me of Mignola in a way. I'm not sure if it's Mig Mignola or Mignola. There's a green hornet. Here's another image that I don't know why that reminds me of of Mignola art, although it's very different. But it just it just kind of does. Maybe it's because of the 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 steampunk elements, like the Hellboy. Yeah, but that's a cool image. The next section of the book is the shadow, and I have to say that. For me, that's one of the most appealing images in the entire book. There's a character called the Spider. Of course, this is reminiscent of Spider-Man, but the art on this is gorgeous. I would I would really like to own all of these covers. There's a Doc Savage section, which to me, I don't know why, but he went for a more cartoony style. And I've seen Doc Savage with painted covers and they're gorgeous. So for me, this is not as appealing as some of the other artwork in this book. For example, that one's more on par with what is in the rest of this book. Then he did a, a series of books called The Grand Passion. And basically, there are all these different colors with images. That isn't appealing to me at all, uh, the way the art is all broken up like that. But it does give a pastiche of, I guess, what's in the issue. He did um, he did a bunch of James... He did uh, covers for the series of James Bond. Like that. That's a great, a great image. And then in the very back, there's an other covers. For example, he did, you know, a variant cover for the boys. This one is cool. There's a, a Zorro image. This one is stellar. 
Redbeard. Sorry, Blackbeard. Here's an image for Alice in Wonderland. Kiss image, one that's psychedelic and one that's all black. And a John Wick. I'm sorry, the dyna dy dynamite art of John Cassidy. Again, at the very end of this video, there will be a flip through of the entire book. So what did you think? Did you, which artist did you enjoy more? Do you enjoy John Cassidy's uh, art or do you prefer Frank Frazetta? All comments are deeply appreciated. Thank you. Let's give Ricky Malo a shout out and also John Josh Keach. Be on the lookout for a book discussion that I'm having with Sleepy Reader. As soon as he uh, gets that up and posted, I will put the link, but it won't be ready for a couple of days because we're going to film it today. But it usually takes at least a day when you do a live posting for it to register. As soon as that's ready, I'll go ahead and post the link here. Uh, we're going to be discussing The Daughter of Dr. Moreau, which is nominated for the Hugo Award this year. And then we're also going to discuss the, the classic inspiration for that, which is The Island of Dr. Moreau. So again, thank you all for the support. Mm -hmm.